but I'm having second thoughts. On Are you shitting my pants, dude? Is the guy I'm having second thoughts on as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Fourth and Trollers, welcome back to Fourth and Troll Fantasy, the most entertaining fantasy football podcast on the planet. I'm Noah Selby. And I'm Wes Selby. And we are back with you for another episode of Fourth and Troll Fantasy. Feels good. Feels great. Life is better than ever. Wes, how you doing? <laughs> um, I'm amazing. Hi. Yeah. With your help. Because you're really excited about this episode, right? With my help, yeah, this episode's this is, gonna be great. It's yeah, this is the best part of, of the last five days right, for me for sure. Right. 100%. Um over Memorial Day weekend, I proposed to my girlfriend. Yeah. And, oh, she said no. Oh <laughs> no. Imagine. Like she I said, I proposed and she didn't like that idea. At I all. did it though. Really? Yeah, what do you think? No. no, she yeah, of course you, said yeah, yes. Did. And um, with your help, being a seeker photographer, took some of the greatest pictures of my life, and I will thoroughly enjoy those forever. And just thanks to you and my parents. And it's a much longer story. If you want to hear more, maybe another time. No, obviously you know, but um, yeah, I'm I'm over the moon. This is yeah, it was beautiful. It was yeah. beautiful, man. It was a great weekend. <laughs> it was, it was an honor to be a part. And uh, my wife and I got to be in the, you know, incognito and just and see it from afar. And I'm trying not to clog up my camera viewfinder with tears and beautiful <laughs> moment, man. And beautiful. We're so happy yeah. for you. All the trollers as well. Everyone's thrilled, especially Tuddy. <laughs> and now that being said, let's have, let's have a, just a great episode because we'll never have episodes the yeah, same anymore. Because now now you're an right. engaged man, incredible! I'm engaged. What a moment! Uh, we got a great show, Amazing. guys. It's going to be a lot of fun today. We're talking about people that we're having second thoughts about. Wes isn't having any second thoughts about his fiance. No, never zero. Never. We're having some second thoughts about some fantasy players in 2024. Some people that we maybe had an idea of. And now we might be changing our minds. Stick in, stick around because I, I'm gonna br- come come with some heat about a guy that's that's getting drafted very early, and we got to talk okay. about him because I'm very, very, I, I, I'm having second thoughts. I think it's gonna be nice a good teaser. one though. Before we do all of that, make sure you're following us on all our socials. Those will be linked down below. Join us in our Patreon. In our, uh, we've got our uh, Discord community in there. We're going to be doing our weekly rankings for the first time ever. We're also giving away a James Cook signed jersey to the winner of our fourth and troll trollers league this season. That's going to be a blast. All of that is done through our Patreon. Right, you're going to win. And, yeah, uh, it'll be like a wedding gift essentially. There you go. Um, we also have merch. As you can see, I'm wearing it right now. Got this little rope cap on. Wes also wearing the merch. Always a fun time with some fourth and troll merch. Shout out to uh, a guy that I'm actually in a dynasty league uh, with who actually bought a mug of ours the other day and, uh, oh. and sent, me a, sent me a picture of it today. And I was like, hey, that's personal so, purchase. Cool. So thanks for yeah, that. was awesome. So thanks, dude. Uh, anyway, all that, all that fun stuff. Subscribe, like, ring the bell. And then, Wes, there's news to talk about because there's. We're back with news because there is actually been news, but now there is news. So let's talk. Yeah, there's actually a good amount of important information, at least semi important. Obviously, obviously, some things you just keep tabs on. But here we go. OK, with the news, first things first, we got a little bit of an update on the Brandon Ayuk contract that he's uh, been trying to figure out with the Niners right now. It appears rumor has it that he is seeking the same contract as a Monroe St. Brown. That is four year. $120 million. We will see how that turns out, but that is apparently what he is trying to get from the San Francisco 49ers. Also, related to contract talks, C.D. Lamb is allegedly waiting for Justin Jefferson to make his deal first, which a lot of people have speculated that J.J. is going to get the most expensive wide receiver contract in NFL history. So after that is apparently when CeeDee Lamb is going to try to negotiate with the Dallas Cowboys. Okay, good luck with that, both teams. 
Kyron Williams is dealing with a foot injury and will not participate in the offseason program as a byproduct. Rookie running back Blake Corum is uh, being asked by the Rams to work on his pass blocking and pass catching while Kyron Williams is out. Just something to keep in mind for the handcuff lovers of fantasy running backs. Just I've already been sold to draft Blake Corum when I can for a handcuff, but more incentive for more PPR potential there if he gets the ball. Dan Campbell stated that Jamison Williams is the most improved player of this offseason for the Detroit Lions. And that is some pretty cool news because in a previous episode during our mock draft, Noah went on a whole spiel about how Jameson Williams is set for a surprisingly good breakout season. So there's there's some more inside information from the Lions, Dan Campbell. Ravens offensive coordinator Tom Munkin stated something a little bit similar about another wide receiver from his team. He said that Rashad Bateman is expected to get the football a lot more and is expected to have a bigger breakout season. We'll see. I don't know about that one personally, but that's something that the head coach or a offensive coordinator did state. One more thing a head coach stated, Texans head coach D'Amico Ryans said that he plans to use Joe Mixon and Damian Pierce because he thinks that Pierce has shown a lot of growth, yada, 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 but he expects to use them as a one-two punch for the Houston backfield for those that are interested in maybe drafting Joe Mixon. Okay, last couple here. Eagles signed John Ross, wide receiver John Ross, the former 40-yard dash record holder. He came out of retirement to play for the Eagles. Keep that in mind. Uh, Devontae Parker retired for those that remember him at all. Okay, R- Rashi Rice's first civil lawsuit court date has been set. Right now it is set for December 9th, 2024, towards the end of this season. Hmm, I have some thoughts about that. We'll yeah. get to maybe them them later. Um, yeah. I think we know that it's probably not going to happen. Okay, last piece of news here. Aaron Rodgers has no restrictions and is fully participating in practice. He's good to go, ready for Aaron Rodgers' QB one season, Gary Wilson wide receiver one season. That's it for the news. Now, let's discuss some of these players that we're having some second thoughts on, Noah. Let's, because I'm scared. Um, Sure. No, listen, we have these guys that we had ideas of coming into the season already, the offseason, moving into the draft, and now we are having second thoughts. We're going to talk about them, good or bad, maybe – talk each other off the ledge with these guys or what i don't know but let's just see i'm gonna jump into it west because i this first guy is somebody that i've i've praised heavily this offseason heavily um and now i'm looking at it and going oh man am i wrong and it's xavier worthy i'm having Hmm. second thoughts about xavier worthy i don't know if it's the trauma from believing in Sky Moore when he got drafted or having some thoughts about Michael Hardman when he got drafted or even even thinking about Justin Watson from time to time or if it's Kadarius Tony being a train wreck last year. I don't know. What I do know is that Isaiah Pacheco has emerged as one of the biggest players on that team. And he is a featured player in that offense. And they run the ball more than I want them to. And so I need you to set me straight here, Wes, because I'm having second thoughts on Xavier Worthy. And I need to know if I should not be, if I'm wrong. What 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 do I do here? What do we do? Am I is is the worry valid? So you feel like you're having second thoughts because you're suddenly recalling all of the other pass catchers that since Tyreek Hill yeah. and even while Tyreek Hill was there, it was no one but him and Travis Kelsey. And now you're like, well, let's see who's it going to be. And and, and yeah. we've all been let down ever since aside from Travis Kelsey, who did kind of let yeah. us down last year. So yeah. I don't, I don't think it's ridiculous to be skeptical about Xavier worthy, but I guess, I guess the question is, are you having second thoughts about him having a good season or are you having second thoughts about drafting him? I think both. Because, oh, okay. Because I, I mean, ADPs have gone up a little bit. They are always fluctuating. They're always shifting. The price 
I think isn't where I would love for it to be right now. I'm a little worried about that. I'm also just, I'm, is, have they become a run first team? Has somehow the offense with Patrick Mahomes become a run first team? And does he have enough, enough juice, enough skill, enough flash to, to, to be a guy that can make a difference for fantasy football. I, and I hope so. Cause I just, I just drafted him in a rookie draft in dynasty is my only share of him. And I, and I'm excited, but I'm also like, is this going to ha- impact year one? What do I like? What do we do? I don't know. A little concerned. That's fair. And actually, you know, this is a good segue because the first guy that I'm having second thoughts on is Rashi rice. Okay. Um, there you go. Second thoughts that I think we could be okay. I, I I'm I don't think I'm scared anymore. I Is don't that think part I of what you were? Yes, yeah. especially based off what you just said. I go back to this. I go back to this Alvin Kamara situation from a couple of years ago, and it was like the civil suit was being pushed further and further, and it was like the it, what we've seen continuously from the NFL is that they don't do anything until some sort of lawsuit court date whatever happens until there's some sort of call there the nfl doesn't do anything the nfl won't make it make a call so we might get a full season of rashi rice here because if that's december that i felt that feels like how it happened with camara it was like well it's gonna be for november and then i was like well it's gonna be for late december and then i was like well it's gonna be for february so he's just gonna play all year and then we'll get a suspension in 2025 like i think you're right i think i think we could go full speed ahead with rushy rice i think no pun intended oh okay but here's (laughs) but okay but here's here's the idea going into the season before any of that awful stuff happened you and i were both like Rashi Rice is going to have a great season. So like, this is going to be great. And like, even yeah. with the addition of Marquis Brown, I was like, I mean, I could take both, but like, I'm really liking what Rashi Rice did last year. And then now yeah. it's almost like we can put this on the back burner from a fantasy football perspective and just say, let's go for it. And yeah. I think, I think, he, I think he'll do, I think he'll do fine. I think he'll, I don't think there'll be any repercussions going on to this season. No, I, I trust that he'll he'll learn his lesson. He'll get some better people in his life and be able to kind of have a good season. But I, I'm having second thoughts. I, I think I'm I'm interested in drafting him again. Yeah, and I'm back in. one real quick too. Okay, because you talk about the ADP fluctuating. Someone commented on our last episode, like, "Hey, can you make sure you say say what the ADP is?" And yeah. I want to make sure we do that too. It's changing so freaking much right now. Dude, yeah, it's a lot. Since, since the last episode, Tank Dell has dropped two rounds. He's yeah. now a sixth-round draft pick. Incredible. When we, were, when we were doing our mock draft just a little bit ago, he was barely a fourth round. He's fourth. almost third round. Yeah. It was yeah. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Everything's changed so much. So we're trying to be vague but kind of give pinpoint ideas. So we're doing the yeah. best we can to say, like, Rashi Rice was like a fourth-round pick. And as of right now – that's the case, but who knows where he is with this news. So it's going to change a lot for several months. Yeah. So we'll do the best we Absolutely. can to specify. Anyway, 100%. Rashi Rice, I think I'm buying back in on. I think, I think, I think so, I'm changing yeah. my mind. We'll see what happens. Uh, I got another wide receiver here I'm a little worried about. Yeah. Hot take. Maybe a little okay. controversial. Maybe yeah. I'm just a little worried. Okay. I'm having second thoughts on Puka Nakua. I'm just, I'm a little, I'm a little scared. Oh, I love Puka so much. I'm not wearing my Puka shirt, but I have a Puka Nakua shirt. I am in love with this guy. Cooper Cup's going to be fully healthy. And Matthew Stafford loves himself some Cooper Cup. Rumor yeah. on the street is that they were seen having their Frosted Flakes together all summer now. I don't. They drafted a third round running back. They drafted a third round running back. Are they going to, are they going to run heavy now? What's McVay doing here? Spending day two capital on a running back. <sighs> Shut me up or tell me I'm wrong or something. Cause I don't know. I it's, it, it, he's, he's going in the <laughs> yeah. first round. He's All going right. in the first round of drafts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Cooper Cup's going to be healthy. He's going to be there. Like it's, it, we've seen it. I almost thought about saying Cooper Cup. I'm, I'm having second thoughts about Cooper Cup. I almost thought about that for this episode to say like, I mean, we know, you know Puka is, seems to be the guy, but like, 
what what if he's as great what if he's as great as he's ever been and, and when cooper cup came back he was phenomenal and they had a bunch of up yeah. and downs and that was unusual but he was kind of hurt most of the season and plus half the year was kind of built around pukunakua and then the emergence of kyron williams but I, I i don't think it's i don't think it's crazy i don't think it's crazy okay. if you're if you're if you want a do it again do it twice do it two years in a row kind of thing yeah from puka it, it's you go all in, of course, but I mean, you have to. Where the ADP is, I think. I think it's much. You're much more comfortable like to say, "Would you rather off have the board?" It's like, would you rather have AJ Brown or Puka Nakua? I think I'd rather right. have AJ Brown. But would you rather Brees Hall or Puka Nakua? I think I'd go Brees Hall. I mean, I, I do. I think I'd I'm, go Brees, I'm going. I'm, run, I think I'm going running back, running back. My first two picks anyway. I think, I think I, I'm going to load up on running backs. This year. I used to, th- I, I had shifted a lot against that last year, but I think you have to this year because I think there's just so much uncertainty with like the rounds four through eight running backs that it's like, right. I think I'm okay, but also I'd rather just lock up B. John Robinson and Saquon Barkley and call it a day and then that'd be amazing and then move on. So I, I don't like having second thoughts on Puka Nakua. I just have some, I, I you've just got to be all in. And I, I previously probably was, but I just remember how good Cooper cup was. And so I think we might have to, I don't know. Yeah. Stay tuned. I, I'm a little worried. The other wide receivers right now, as of, as of recording this episode that are being drafted around Puka Nakua are Jamar chase and AJ Brown, of course, in that first round. And then early in the second round is Marvin Harrison Jr. and Garrett Wilson. I think yeah. all of those wide receivers are clearly wide receiver ones and and have league winning upside. Sure, I don't, I don't think it's outrageous, but we'll we'll we will go through training camp and and understand more of Matt of Matthew Stafford's relationship and chemistry with Cooper Cup to see if yeah. that is affected with if that affects Pukunakua too much. Yeah, I, that's not I just crazy. About, I just think about like. Could this level back out to when it was like Cooper Cup and Robert Woods? And does, is, does Puka just end up being like a really, really solid wide receiver too? Yeah. But you paid first round capital for him. It's tough. You're it's tough me to figure out. Second so, guess. I know, dude. It sucks. It sucks. What are you I doing? Well, you know what we need to do is we just need to remind ourselves that Cooper Cup is an old man and he <sighs> is coming off of many injuries and it's probably going to be okay. But I'm also terrified, and I'm gonna put a blindfold on and a um, earmuffs and a. I'm just trying to think of sensory uh, deprivation kind of thing. A, a, yeah, like close on the nose, <laughs> yeah, and then the, duct tape your mouth. mouth. I, yeah, I don't know. A sock in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> listen, listen. Cool. To, to, nice I, image. I, I, I'm gonna keep being sad if I keep thinking about it. So let's move sure. on. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I'm having second thoughts about this next player it's a running back and i haven't really talked about much him talked about him much on the show but uh privately when when this guy got traded i was like oh you know all right i'm kind of interested um but i don't think i am anymore and it doesn't really have to do with the news earlier but i think i'm having second thoughts about joe mixon like all together and it's not a huge mm-hmm. deal i don't think it's a it's a standout player but i just mm-hmm. like thinking I've never bought in on Joe Mixon. And as of now, he's a fifth round guy. And there's a lot of hype on the Texans, but this is clearly a a a pass first team. And yeah. on top of that, Joe Mixon was getting cut by the Bengals. Right. And then the Texans said, oh, we'll throw in a seventh round or sixth round just just to just so we can get him. We wouldn't have to do worry about anything. But I just I mean, I, I love the idea of having a, any starting running back on my team, but for fifth round, that feels early for a guy that is I've never been I've never been excited about. And I think we've seen two years ago he got top ten because he had one fifty five point game against the Panthers. Right. And then last year he got top ten again because Joe Burrow was hurt for right. the first few games and then to end the season, he was just dead. So then yeah. Mixon was <laughs> very great. I don't think, I don't see that happening at all. And so it's not yeah. much of a, it's 
not probably a very exciting person to talk about, but I just I was like, you know, I, I was kind of thinking about him. Not yeah. anymore. I don't really I'm not I'm not in on Joe Mixon. Yeah, I found it really interesting when they traded for him and immediately gave him a contract extension. And I, my, my thing with Joe Mixon is he's never been uber efficient. He is just in an offense where he was used a lot. The Bengals used him so much. And it was like, okay, well, he's going to get his volume. So he'll be decent. You mentioned his 55 point game that like vaulted him into relevancy. And as far as when you look at the numbers and standings at the end of the season that year, and then last season, he was like a top seven running back again, because Joe Burrow got hurt and he just got used so much. He was relied on heavily. I think everyone's really excited because they saw Devin Singletary be like a really, really legitimate fantasy option in this, in this offense last season. I pulled up Devin Singletary's game log. Week 10, RB3 was awesome. Uh, 23.1. Week 11, uh, 19.8 was the RB8. And week 15, 21 points was the RB7. Besides that, he was, when he started getting like the real kind, I'll say full-time role over Damian Pierce, but kind of not really. He was playing a heavy, more heavy percentage of snaps, but RB40? RB18, RB33, RB22, mm. RB33, RB23, RB17. Like it was just it's it's interesting how this went about because I think they looked at it and they let Singletary walk so they were like what do we do? I don't really know. Yeah. Like, like, what do it we says do? more about Damian Pierce to me. They were like, "Oh, we oh, we need someone else." He can't be the guy. Yeah. So it, it's I, I and I'm not certain where Mixon's ADP is at right now, but I'm not, I'm probably not fully bought in there either. I just think he'll get enough. Well, I don't even know if we're going to follow him. I don't know. They, they like him because they traded for him for a seventh round pick. And I haven't looked at the contract breakdown, but then immediately gave him an extension. So maybe mm. this year he's used, but yeah, you don't have to try and convince me on not being oh, yeah. sold on Joe Mixon. Cool. I'm, I've, I've never been a huge, huge guy on that, but um. Okay, here's one that I'm scared to even bring up. Yeah, he's the last guy. But I'm yeah. having second thoughts on Tyreek Hill. I am I'm very very scared. I think what what if what if defenses figured it out? What if defenses watched the Chiefs in the playoffs and other other people watched tape in the playoffs? And they were like, yeah, he had like, what, like one catch and then Legereus Sneed just grounded him into the ground, like just tormented him the rest of the game. And surely this, this, there are teams and defenses watching this going, okay, as long as we can cover this up, we've seen Tua gets uncomfortable in the pocket. From what we've heard, that's something he's working on this offseason. But I, what, what if, what if Tua isn't able to, get him the ball as much as we want him to. Is Tyreek Hill worth the third overall pick in drafts just for the ceiling? That's where my, this is where my second thoughts are lying at when I'm looking at it and going, I don't know, there's CD lamb there, or there's, or like we just said, we might be going running back, running back. Is it, is it worth grabbing Brees Hall with the third overall pick? Is it worth pivoting a wide receiver to somebody else maybe you maybe you still just trust jefferson and the raw talent there maybe it's chase with burrow coming back whatever it is maybe it's a modern st brown on a new contract like a modern st brown was so consistent and so awesome like what what is the 103 worth it that's where my thoughts are sitting at right now are you shitting myself <laughs> are you shitting my pants dude Tyreek Hill is the guy I'm having second thoughts on as well. Is he really? is the guy I was about <laughs> to say next. I'm having second thoughts on Tyreek Hill because he's going to be 31. It's his ninth year. He's yeah. been so good for so long. And the most impressive thing is he has not been hurt. Right. For so long. He missed one game because of a drop hip tackle. That was it. Yeah. And he still finished that game against the Titans. And then he missed one game and that was it. And he was a game time decision. Otherwise, here is essentially an old man who's 
the name of his game is speed. And as Dolphins fans, you and I watch Tyree Kill will sometimes just run out of bounds, yeah. just untouched, just a, a horizontal line, and they go sit down on the bench, and we're like, oh, no, it's finally happening. Our season's over. Tyree Kill is done. And they drink some pickle juice and snort some Gatorade and goes back out, and that's <laughs> it. But like, I just – I'm worried it's going to happen. I'm yeah. worried one of these series, one of these games, he's going to be out. And and like you said too, like they have the Dolphins have to have a more balanced offense now. Devon Achan is going to be there more steadily. Jalen Waddle should see more. Odell Beckham Jr. I'm with you. I don't I don't like this idea. I don't like the way we're closing the show on this. Yeah, me either. But I'm having second <laughs> thoughts on Tyreek Hill too. Yeah, I just I, it's something that we've talked about a lot. As, like you said, as Dolphins fans, this off season we've mentioned. This passing game needs depth. There's only so many times that it can just be a play designed to get the ball out quick to Tyreek that fast, especially when you have people like Jalen Model, like Odo Beckham Jr., like Devon Chen, like Raheem Mostert, like Jalen Wright, like Jonu Smith now on the team, like a sleeper pick here for us in the draft was Malik Washington out of Virginia, like all these guys now. And it's like, will he get the target share? How much, how much is he actually going to be playing? How much, what's his snapshot going to look like? Dude has not, since he got to Miami, I have never been satisfied with where Tyree Kill's snap share has been at for how much he's being paid and how much, how highly he has looked at as the best wide receiver in the NFL. Dude, 66%, 86%, 53%, 72%, 46%, 57%. I mean, granted, some of these games are like blowing people out. But sure. Then, even it. in the games against, even in the games like against like Philly, seventy eight percent against the. Go to the Chargers. Go to Chargers week one, the one you and I were one. at. Yeah, how insane of a close game that was! Sixty six percent of snaps. He had like two hundred yards. Yeah, I know. So it's like, what? Why does he not play more snaps? What it was? It was, uh, huh? Mm. I don't know. We're getting we have no here. numbers to prove any of this. It's I just know. gut it's just, feeling. We're but... just, it's just vibes. Holy it's just vibes. Cow, it's, I don't know. That's gonna, listen, that's going to do it. For, uh, I, don't, I hate how we just close this out. It's <laughs> this horrifying. Is the worst. <laughs> it's terrible. But that's going to do it. Let us know what your thoughts are on all these players. Do you have any second thoughts on anybody so far? Who are like? It, it's the off season. All we can do is think. And this is where it goes. This is where it takes <sighs> us to. It's, it's ridiculous. But... Let us know in the comments. Like we said before, like, subscribe, ring the bell, drop a comment, make Teddy the Troll smile. Follow us on all our socials and uh, try and win a James Cook signed jersey and take it away from Wes because apparently he's going to win it. Um, Obviously. Do all that through our Patreon. You also get access to our Discord, our Discord community. It's a blast. It's a great time. That's it. That's all I got. You got anything? Congratulations again. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> Life is amazing. Sweet. Life is I'm awesome. Great. That's it. I'm Noah Selby. And I'm Wes Selby. And this has been 4th and Troll Fantasy. 4th and Troll Fantasy is a production of FQ Media Group and Selby Artistic Workshop.